So you not only give um, opportunities, or rather at least, mm. you know, um, improve the lifestyle of your siblings mm. by, you know, contributing to their education and yes. sending them abroad to yes. Korea, yes. but you also open doors for so many Kenyans as well. Yes, uh, I, I did. I, yes. I did. Um, if you come to my village, the people that I helped send outside the country, some of them are in the U.S. Army, some of them are in, uh, you know, uh, some are in Denmark, some are in different countries. If you go to Korea alone, uh, you know, some of the people who are there, well, they're courtesy of me. Mm. So when I was in Germany, I had this motto in life that uh, I, I will help myself mm. and help other people because nobody is there to help you anyway. Yeah. Um, and that motto in life really helped me, uh, that it is me to help me and help other people. Vis a vis nowadays, people think you're supposed to help them. Mm -hmm. The government is there to help you. Mm -hmm. that your parents should help you. Your brother should help you. That you, you know, if you look at life in that manner, mm -hmm. that people should help you, mm -hmm. and yet everyone has problems, right? Yeah. You would never succeed. And so yeah. if you look at my history, the difficulties, it's studying, you know, the coming from an average, not not poor, you know, uh, average family. Yeah. That was pushing me to work hard. I developed hunger for success. Mm. You know, because if you are contented, you don't go looking for food. But if you are running away from poverty, you are running away from, you don't want that difficult life. You want your children to have better education than you had. Yeah. Then you work hard. So this has really, really pushed me mm. in life. And um, So what I hear you saying yeah. is we shouldn't have a sense of entitlement, like I'm um, just being, I uh, will be helped, Daniel will come and help me. Absolutely. Or, yeah. Yeah, because Daniel also maybe has his problems. So if you approach life in that manner, that you want people to help you, uh, then you do not understand that even those people who you want to help you also have their problems. Everyone has problems. As long as God has given me the uh, capability to work. And um, I remember at some point when I was in Polytechnic, mm. I was living with my sister. And uh, my sister had a sewing machine in the house. Mm -hmm. I could take this sewing machine. I learned how to sew. I used to make bed covers. Who? Me. I used to go to a river in Nairobi, buy bed, make bed covers and sell. Um, I did that to support myself, to support myself, because I did not want to depend on my, on my family or on anything. So, and uh, if you ask my, my family how I was able to go abroad, they don't know how I got my passport, they don't know how I paid my way. I did all that on my own. And that is something that also drove me when I, uh, uh, when I of course, when I, when I joined politics. Huh? Mm. One of the things that drove me to join politics, of course, I travel, I organized a trip uh, to Korea. Mm. Uh, that is now uh, uh, when I joined Globe Peace Foundation. Yeah with the former Prime Minister, Rai Lodinga. Yeah. I went there, him and uh, Governor Ngwai of Kisi, and Governor Nanok, because I had this Korean example, the Korean uh, model of development is something that I really like to copy. It's, they call it the, the New Village Movement, Semaul Undong, where people to develop, they come together and solve a problem. If a bridge needs to be fixed, rather than waiting for government to come, you get the people there, come and donate labor, Government can come in and maybe buy cement for you and you do it. Eh? So the small, the new village movement is what led to the Korean Renaissance. Mm. People give example today, 30 years ago, Korea was like us. Um, but that is, Korean came together. They came together to actually build their communities. Mm. And uh, I took Rai Ludinga and uh, Nano, Governor No Kan Gwai to the Semalundong Center. So they saw how Korea, the museum, how Korea, even before that, they even had grass-touched houses. They used to, the, the flower, they used to make it, like, like the flower used to see my grandmother mm -hmm. make like this. Those things are there in the museum. So I asked this guy, gentleman, say, look, now that this, we are seeing what this is, these guys came from poor background and now is one of the most technological advanced countries. Why yeah. can't we start something like this in Kenya? Right. So, um, so when he came back, of course, I thought these guys could start something similar. So, but I decided, fine, if they're not going to start it, I started. So I came up and started something in my village called Dongrokdala. Mm -hmm. Dongrokdala means develop your village. So I used to encourage uh, the village to develop with their resources. So if you are a plumber, for example, I would encourage you to hire some plumbers, not even hire, get a young boys who are idle, teach them how to, how, how to work for you for free. 
um, uh, kind of apprenticeship mm. and they learn on the job. And then um, as they do that, uh, you of course getting free labor and you're able to develop your, uh, your, your village, your, business. your community. And that's what um, led to the founding of Dong Rock Dala. And, uh, but when I went to the village with this idea, they thought I, was going, I wanted to run for politics. <laughs> so they started coming to me and telling me, now, now that you are here, we know you want to be MP, now this is what you must do. Uh -huh. You must prepare an, enough money. You must have two bank accounts, one for your family and one for us. Hey. And, you know, and you see, in the village they have this thing of uh, gonya. In Kijalu it's called gonya or release me. Meaning? So once you meet people, uh -huh. a politician will tell you, uh -huh. after talking to them, you talk to them and then uh, they'll tell you, now we release us to go. You have, I mean, they can't go before you release them. Oh, it means give them money. <laughs> so it was baptism by fire mm. because then I didn't believe in that kind of um, development strategy. But here, these guys are pushing me into politics. And then they're pushing me to go against my values. Well, my values. And um, I remember that's how I launched my political career, because now yeah. then I would be able to go talk to people, carry them. And release but, them. And, um, <laughs> and, okay, personally, I was not releasing them. I was telling them that, look, if I release you like that, <laughs> you, you, do not, uh, you do not have the opportunity to create something for yourself. So I say, I'd rather give, teach you how to fish mm. rather than um, give you fish. 